Oh, thank you. Well, make so, me dance up in here. <laughs> I'm wondering what I'm serving some. I just want to thank the ones that's supposed to be here, the ones that's on their way getting here, and we're going to have a phenomenal time. Yeah. We're going to have a phenomenal time, you know, in Christ. And I thank God for the opportunity to join Phenomenal Women uh, with Tanya Hutchins, the founder. I really appreciate this opportunity to be able to reach out and equip and inspire and change some women's lives in, throughout the U.S. So with that being said, so I'm going to have you guys, each of us have some words. We're going to have you reflect on these words as we come forth with these words. So um, it can be some words that reflect part of your life or part of your past life or things you're going through right now or things that you've been through. So uh, my word was submission. That's a powerful word. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because a lot of people don't know what submission is. They don't know how to submit themselves. And that goes for men and women. So when I chose submission, um, I had a lot of feedbacks off of that word because truly a lot of people really don't know what it means to submit. Why do I have to listen to somebody tell me what to do? Or why do I have to obey somebody? Or, you know, I, that's not my father, or they're not my mother, or they're not my uh, keeper. You know, it's not about that. It's about if you submit to God, you have to submit to his head. And as well as that head is submitting to God, you are, in, as a woman, you're in place to submit to your head. Because if you can't come into submission with that head, your home is going to be divided. See, that's when you're wearing your mask and you don't know how to take it off. Because you got so much hurt and disappointment and things going on inside of you because of some past relationships that you dealt with. But when God put in place for a person to come into your life, so you got to submit to them as he's submitting to God. So we all know that's a powerful word. Yes, it is. Yeah. So we have to line ourselves up to know how to submit to God's word and, and what he has put forth for us as women. Because we can easily walk around and say we're Proverbs 31 women, but are you walking in that anointing? Are you walking as a Proverbs 31 woman? Are you submitting to God as you're supposed to? So, I'm going to read off bios of each speaker um, as they come forth. And I'm, I'm Evangelist Carolyn Hall. I was born to a pastor and a wonderful mother. Um, I'm born in Gary, Indiana. I started out as 13. Um, well, actually, as a, my dad said I started out when I was five in ministry, picking up the microphone and ministering in church. So as I started growing in Christ and as God in Christ, God started equipping me and positioning me to be what he has called for for me to do. I had to find out what my calling was, what was my passion, what God has. He sent so many different people to tell me what I supposed to be doing. And I kind of ignored it because I wore masks from hurt, disappointment, rejection, uh, rape, molestation, abuse, but you have to come to a point in time is when you're going to take it off. How long are you going to carry that stuff with you? How long are you going to deal with that situation? Because whatever happened in your past, you ain't going to never see what your future is like if you keep wearing all that stuff on, if you keep wearing it on your shoulders. So how long are you going to keep wearing a mask without removing so we're going to remove the mask on today. We're going to find out who you are. We're going to find out your purpose in life. You're going to find out what your walk is. So with that being said, our first speaker, Evangelist Loretta Tate. Loretta is a wife, a community advocate, life coach, certified anger management specialist. Her heart is for those who desire experience wholeness. Tate has a master science in professional counseling for Grand Canyon University. Loretta is a licensed associated professional counselor. She is under the direction and supervision of Yolanda Seals. Loretta has experience providing service for working with homeless, the homeless women and children dealing with substance abuse, domestic violence, life challenging issues, Atlanta, Georgia. She worked with worldwide range emotional and service 
um, behavior issues, providing services that span from therapy, depression, parenting support, substance abuse, couples counseling, and other services to many listed in throughout Cobb County. Has perfect her passion for integrated spiritual framework along with science into her counseling session. Also, Loretta is one of our um, Minister, she's on the minister, and she ministers at the church as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. God uses her in a phenomenal way. He uses her so deeply, and um, also, you know, anybody that lives in Georgia that really needs someone to talk to, she's a really good person to talk to. So, and, you know, with her spiritual standpoint, also her professional standpoint. So, you know, if you need that help, don't be afraid to talk to somebody when you need that. I got a life coach, and I love her. She's awesome. So, uh, with that being said, we're going to bring forth Miss Evangelist Loretta Tate. Good afternoon. It's 12 o'clock, so it's afternoon, right? Yes. How are you guys doing this morning? Wonderful. Wonderful. I just want to say that I'm so elated and I'm really excited about being here because, you know, Carolyn didn't have to invite me out. And I appreciate her and I appreciate the fact that she is following what God has called her to yes. do to yes. move forward and to help women to remove the mask, to know their purpose. I thought that topic was so dynamic because it's so vast and there's so much there. And I'm not gonna stay before you long. She gave me my time frame. And one thing that I like to do is I like to be obedient. I like to do what it is that somebody asks me to do and then I'm gonna take my seat. That's what I'm going to do. Y'all doing all right today? Yes. yes. Woo. I wanna say this though, the one thing that um, Carolyn, when she asked me to do this, I really had to take some time to think about it. And the reason why I thought about it is because, you know, I was getting in flesh and putting up one of those masks where I'm going to be strong and I don't want to do this, you know? Oh. But the reality of it is, is that I had to go back and I had to remember what I told the Lord the first of this year. I told the Lord that I will say yes this year, that I will be obedient unto his word and I will move out of my comfort zone. So Carolyn, Thank you for helping me to move out of my comfort zone. I appreciate it for that push. So many of us are wearing masks. And we've gotten so comfortable with our masks that we don't even realize that we're wearing one. A mask is just what it is. It is to disguise who we really are. Yeah. If you think about Batman, Batman doesn't want anybody to know who he is. Girl, this is good. And so, <laughs> come on now. So, with that being said, is we're wearing masks of whatever strong. But before I move into that, I want to tell you guys a quick story, and also too, anytime that I'm given the opportunity to stand before anyone, it's all about choices. Yes. And you know why it's about choice? It's because God gave us choice. He gave us a choice to either to choose life or to choose death. And I want you guys to know that I choose life on today. And I hope that each and every one of you are choosing life. My God. See, we, this, this is a conference, so y'all bear with me, but I'm being my authentic self. Yes, you are. I'm being who God has called me to be. Yeah. I want to tell you guys about a story. It's a short story. It's about a girl named Sheila. Sheila was a very ambitious person, and you know, she was young, and she was full of life, and she was hanging out with her friends and trying to understand who she is. So she was hanging out with about four friends, and they were walking along, and they thought that they would go to the park and just kind of have a conversation about life. The one thing about Sheila is that she was fearful of dogs. How many of you are fearful of dogs? I used to be. But if you're not fearful of dogs, then what do you fear? Okay. It's just something to think about. The one thing about it is, as they were walking along, there was this dog that was standing on the side. And as that dog was standing on the side, her friends was like, oh my gosh, they took off. They went running. But Sheila stood there. And you know what Sheila did? Sheila closed her eyes, and she covered her face, and she stood still. The dog looked, he was a little confused because people were running and Sheila was standing there. But I tell you what, after the dog just went on, because he's like, I'm confused, I don't know what's going on, and he went on about his way. I tell you this, they got back together and the friend said, Sheila, you told us that you were terrified of dogs. Why didn't you run with the rest of us? You know what Sheila said? Well, Sheila said that I closed my eyes and I covered my face because I, the dog couldn't see me. Wow. Now, 
wow, that's and if you think about that, I really laugh because it was funny to me because how in the world a dog can't see you mm. just because you covered your eyes and, and close your, covered your face and closed your eyes. So what I found it very profound is because that's what we do. That's what we do. What we do is we carry masks, we walk around with being strong for whatever various reasons that we wear a mask, right? But Sheila wasn't really ready to deal with her fear. My God. How many of you here are ready to remove your mask? How many? And I'm a person that likes to ask questions, and I ask questions because I want to provoke you to thought. I want you to be able to think about it because if you don't think, guess what? There's no change. Because if there's no awareness of a thing, change cannot happen. That's right. That's right. Oh my goodness. Like I said, I'm not going to be here long. Like I stated before, we wear masks for various reasons. Rather it's to hide our anger. Rather it's to hide our fears. Rather it's for our hurts or our vulnerability or for any excitement or sadness. I want you guys to understand this. The things that we've gone through, your pain deserves a voice. You have to give a voice to your pain in order to heal. A lot of people do not want to do that. They want to do like Sheila. They want to close their eyes and cover their face and not deal with that mask. My goodness. Hmm. Other times, people really wear a mask for other reasons. They do it because they don't know who they are. Wow. That's and if you don't know who you are, then you can be whomever. Whatever it is that somebody might want you to be. Mm -hmm. You got to know who you are. And if we think about it, if we think about 